Hey, it's Scott. And what I want to go ahead and quickly touch on in this Give Me Five involves something that many of us were taught in school, but may or may not have physically actually made a whole lot of sense. And that involves the whole idea of when you're intubating using a curved blade or a straight blade. So with that in mind, as a rule, outside of anesthesia, where they have lots of different toys, for most of us, we've got curved and straight. And when we look at this one, this one is a straight, otherwise known as a Miller, but far easier, especially if you don't play with it every day and you don't want to get your nomenclature wrong, it looks straight, so simply call it a straight. The other one, to no surprise, looks curved, so we call it a curved. If you want to get fancy, it's a Macintosh or a Mac. But again, if you're not sure which is which, if it's straight, call it a straight. If it's curved, call it a curved. And happily, you'll be set. Now, when you're trying to figure out what size blade should you use in a baby or a kid, yes, you can try to memorize it, but why would you possibly do that? What works far better in real life is on the Braslow tape or on the Hentevi book or app, it will tell you what size blade is recommended. But when you're actually holding the blade in your hand, remember if you're trying to figure out what size it actually is on the back, right here on the blades is where it's going to say zero, one, two, three, four, whatever it might be. So figure out straight or curved and then just simply look for the size according to the Braslow tape or the hand heavy app and you're ready to go. Now, why this comes into play, though, is specifically what many of us were taught in school in regards to using a curved versus a straight. And remember, many of us were taught that if we look at this airway, this big thing looks like a tongue is called the tongue. And why that's important is when you follow the tongue down at the base of the tongue is where you see this big floppy thing, which is your epiglottis. And remember, your epiglottis is the gatekeeper. That clues you in, hiding right behind me, here I am, is where your vocal cords and the entry to the glottis or your airway is going to be. And we were taught that if you use a curved blade the way that you're supposed to use a curved blade, remember that it would slide down and it would look for the vollecula. And the vollecula, remember, is that little spot right before the epiglottis. And if you use a curved blade, then you put pressure on it and it would pull the vollecula and it would pull the epiglottis out of the way. Versus if you use a straight blade, remember that's where as you go down and you would sweep the tongue to the side, but then we actually grab the whole epiglottis and pull it out of the way so that we can find where we need to put our tube. So why that comes into play is if you're a medic taking National Registry, or if you're a nurse taking CEN or CPEN, when you're intubating adult, anesthesia will tell you you can use whatever you want. And if you're intubating a kid, you can honestly use whatever you want. But when it comes to babies on alphabet soup Tests, they will tell you that if you're intubating a baby, you should use a straight. The rationale being that babies have epiglottises that are like yo big. And if you use a curved blade the way that you're supposed to use a curved blade, that the epiglottis just flops down over your view and laughs at you and says it's not going to happen. So that's why the book says you should use a straight. However, if you talk to the nursery docs or pediatric anesthesia, they'll tell you get over it. Just in real life, use whatever you want. Meaning, if you're good with a curved, can you intubate a baby with a curved? Absolutely. Whichever you're better with, the bigger deal is put the tube in and be done. So the test says babies get a straight. Real life says whichever you're more comfortable with, you know what, you can put it in and do just fine. So that is what most people in school have experienced. Whereas you saw the nice mannequin and you see the tongue and the beautiful epiglottis, the molecula and the cords. And that's how many people learn to intubate. However, in our courses, we believe that if you really want to learn, you have to touch tissue. So with that, 
here. We've taken one of our fetal pigs. And in our little fetal pig, we've cut away the airway to show you what you're actually looking for and how a curved versus a straight actually works. And if you were to go ahead and take your curved blade and you notice that your curved blade literally fits on the tongue. So if you use a curved blade and it goes painstakingly slow down the tongue, you find the vollecula or that spot right before the epiglottis. And once you find the vollecula, if you use a curved blade the way that you're supposed to use a curved blade, when you put pressure on it, you see how the epiglottis now stands at attention and moves out of the way and allows you access to the cords. Versus if you're using a straight blade, right? Remember, you sweep that tongue to the side and instead of trying to find this super tiny infant vollecula, you just simply take your straight blade and grab the epiglottis, pull everything out of the way, and say, hopefully, there's the cords. So when you're taking some sort of an alphabet soup exam, if you're intubating a baby, the book says you should use the straight. When you're intubating, everybody else use whatever you want. So the moral of the story is whether it's a baby or a big person, whatever you're more comfortable with is absolutely what you should use. Either way, the tube is going in the same spot. You just need to know how to properly use your toys in order to find the correct spot. Mm -hmm.